Have you ever had an issue with not being able to connect your NAS to the network? In this video, we will go over some troubleshooting methods using Windows to identify common issues with the invisible NAS. In a normal situation, once you have your NAS physically connected, you should be able to sit on your network and then connect to it via credentials. But what can you do when you don't see the NAS on the network? Some possible scenarios can be that you connected your computer to a new network where the NAS is located, or you moved your NAS from another network to the network where your computer is. Or for the forensic folks, you just come upon a NAS in the course of a search. What steps can you take to troubleshoot the problem? Let's break this down to see what information you need to connect to a NAS. Number one, you need the IP address of your computer. Number two, you need the IP address of the NAS. Number three, you will need network connection between the computer and the NAS. Number four, you will need the credentials to log into the NAS as a regular user or guest. And number five, you will need the name of the file share that you want to connect to. Step one, the IP address of your computer. Let's check on the IP assigned to your computer. To do that on Windows 10, right click on the Windows icon on the lower left and then select Network Connections. Now we see the Network Status panel. In my case, since I'm on a private network, I know I'm not connected to the internet. So this warning is okay. And then looking at the Ethernet section, I will click on Properties. And then if I scroll down, we see that my IP is assigned automatically by DHCP which is actually not active on this network. And this is expected because I had my laptop connected to my lab network, but then I removed it to connect it directly to the NAS. Another way of looking up your IP address is by using the command line. So if we bring up the command shell and type in ipconfig, we see that the IPv4 address we have is 169.254.44.153 with a net mask of 255.255.0.0. I recognize that this is a APIPA address, which is an automatically assigned local IP address. Um, so this is fine. So check, we have the first item that we need which is the IP address of our computer. So for step two, I'm gonna use Wireshark to sniff out the traffic of the network. If you're lucky, the IP address of the NAS is documented somewhere, right? You can look for it on a post-it note or label on the NAS itself. Another method is that a lot of NAS manufacturers have software that you can run that will help you discover the NAS. So an example is the Synology Assistant utility. Uh, or you can just type find.synology.com you know, in your browser address bar. And in this video, I'm going to use Wireshark to sniff the traffic of the network. To make things easier, I'm going to connect the NAS directly to the computer using an Ethernet cable so that those are the only two devices on our network. Otherwise, we'll get too much traffic to filter through. In most modern machines, the network devices support auto crossover, so you don't need a crossover cable. Otherwise, you'll have to connect the two devices together using a switch or a crossover cable. So once I launch Wireshark, and make sure that you are doing this as the administrator, otherwise you will not see any of the packets on the network. I'm going to go ahead and select my Ethernet interface, and then take a look at the traffic. Wow, looks like there's a lot of traffic going on just between these two machines. And so to narrow things down, I am going to look at just the ARP packets. So I'm gonna add this to the filter. Just type ARP up here. We see traffic from our machine, which is 169.254.44.153. And then we also see ARP traffic from 169.254.1.2, which the NAS, since we only have these two devices on the network. So that's the check to number two, the IP address of the NAS. 
For step three, we want to see if the computer can actually see the NAS on the network. So in the command window, I am going to do a ping to the NAS. So I'm going to do ping 169.254.1.2. And at this point, you may say to yourself, self, of course ping would work since we saw the NAS with Wireshark. Well, maybe. In this case, when the IP address for our computer is set via APIPA, uh, the two devices are on the same subnet, so they will be able to talk to each other. But in some cases, your computer may have a preset manual IP address from when it was on a different network. And so if I run ipconfig in this example, we see that our IP is 192.168.1.13. So if I try to ping the NAS by doing ping of 169.254.1.2, this is going to fail. All right, so let's compare the IP address from the computer with that of the NAS. And are they on the same subnet as defined by their submask? In this example, my computer IP is 192.168.1.13, and the NAS IP is 169.254.1.2. And in this case, since we don't have a router to another network, the ping will fail, which may also be the reason why your Windows machine cannot see the NAS. But Wireshark can see the packets on the network because I have it in promiscuous mode, right? So to narrow things down, I can add a filter to only look at packets where the source address is not from our computer. So up here in the filter, I'm going to type ip.src not equal, exclamation equal, 192.168.1.13. And now I see the address of 169.254.1.2, which is the IP of the NAS. So one way to put the two devices on the same network is to set the IP of my computer to the 169.254 subnet by either giving it a manual IP or by changing it to obtain an IP dynamically using DHCP, where in this case, the APIPA process will assign it a unique IP in the 169.254 subnet. And once I have done that, you can see that the ping now works. So that's a check for part three. We have established a network connection between the computer and the NAS. Step four, obtaining the credentials for the NAS. For this part, if the NAS is yours, then you should have the credentials. If the NAS is not yours and you have the proper legal authority to access it, then you can try to talk to the owner or the sysadmin for the credentials. And sometimes if you get lucky, the owner would have written it on a post-it, like in this example. Or else if you have a computer that has successfully connected to the NAS, you can try to capture the negotiation handshake between the client and the server, and then use a password cracker to obtain the password. Another possible method is that it is likely that the credentials are the same for the NAS as it is to log into the computer. So if you can use uh, something like Offcrack, John the Ripper, Hashcat, or any other cracking program to get the password. So that's a check for step four, the credentials of the NAS. Step five, the name of the file share. So depending on the NAS that you're trying to connect to, you may or may not need the name of the file share. Sometimes the NAS will show you all of the shares when you connect to it. And then sometimes you will get a fail if you don't specify the name of the exact file share. So for this portion, let's use the command line to see the names of the file shares. You can use the command net view and then give it the IP of the NAS. So for us, it's slash slash 169.254.133.94, and then forward slash all to see all of the shares. And in this case, we get an error. No worries, as I still have some tricks up my sleeve. One possible reason is that your machine does not have network discovery enabled. So let's go ahead and turn that on. 
So if you go to the Network and Sharing Center, underneath there, you can select Advanced Sharing Settings. And then from there, you have the ability to click on the Private Networks. And then from there, you can turn on Network Discovery. All right, with Network Discovery turned on, we can go ahead and use File Explorer again. So in the address bar, I'm gonna type in backslash backslash 169.254.133.94. Backslash Hans and once again we get an error So another possible reason is that I noticed that the NAS I am connecting to is kind of old So it's probably only running SMB version 1 which is disabled due to security reasons most systems after mid 2017 which is when the WannaCry ransomware was introduced the uh, SMB version 1 was pretty much turned off but since we are on our own network, we can go ahead and turn it on because we understand the security implications here. So what we want to do is go to turn Windows feature on and off. And underneath there, you want to look for the SMB 1.0. And on my computer, I'm going to make sure that I have the client box checked. So now let's see if the third time is a charm for me. Let's use File Explorer again. I'm going to do backslash backslash 169.254.133.94. And sure enough, the NAS is connected and we can see the files that are shared. Instead of using the GUI tools, some people like to type. And here are the same steps but using PowerShell so you can actually script them if you want. So for step one, we want to look at the IP address of our machine. Um, so the first thing you want to do is obviously launch PowerShell uh, using the admin mode. And then one of the first things we need to understand is what adapter we're looking at because for every machine, there could be multiple uh, network adapters. So I'm going to type get-net adapter, which will show us the name of the interfaces and then to see the IP address for a specific interface, you can type get-net IP address, and then we can specify the interface alias by dash interface alias, and in our case, it's just called Ethernet. And this is gonna actually output a lot of information, so I'm gonna go ahead and pipe it to select-object and just look for the IP address. And so this gives us the IPv6 and the IPv4 addresses that we're looking for. Uh, or another command we can use is just get net IP configuration. So this gives us the interfaces and the respective IP addresses. All right, for using the ping command, you can obviously use ping in PowerShell, but it has its own version of the ping, which is called test-connection. And you can basically just give it the IP address of 169.254.133.94. And then it'll come back and tell you whether there is a network connection between your computer and the NAS. To look at SMB or the file shares, you can use the net view command. So I'm going to type net view backslash backslash 169.254.133.94 forward slash all. And so at this point, when we run the net view, we are unsuccessful in seeing the file share. And if I want to see whether SMB version one protocol is supported, I can do get windows optional feature dash online dash feature name smb1 protocol and this comes back and tells us whether it is enabled or not and so if we want to enable it we can just do enable windows optional feature dash online dash feature name smb1 protocol And now if we rerun the net view again, we are successful in seeing the file shares. So the PowerShell commands 
to connect the drive is new dash ps drive. And then we can give it a drive letter. So I'm going to do dash name V and then dash PS provider. And then it's going to be file system and then dash root and then the IP and file system name followed by the dash credential. And then for us, it's going to be Hans is the username and then dash persist. If we want this to run the command and then give you the command prompt back and have the drive letter V remain actively mounted to the NAS. And when you're done, you can just do get dash PS drive, give it the name of the drive letter, which is V in this case, and then pipe that to remove dash PS drive. And now we see that the V drive is no longer available. So the NAS is unmounted. For more networking nugget videos, watch these videos here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.